Oh, hey everybody, how you guys doing? What's that? What? I can't. Oh. Black Adam got smacked by Wakanda Forever. I mean, who would have thought that was gonna happen, right? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel once again. So, as we thought, Wakanda Forever came out this past weekend. Wally whopped every single thing in the box office, including none other than Black Adam himself. Black Adam, I think, has been financially disappointed thus far since its theatrical run. And now Wakanda Forever came out and just took whatever little juice it had left. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are finding me for the first time, smash that like and subscribe button. So we're going to go over the overall box office this past weekend. And I just want to say this guy, I enjoyed Black Adam for it was. It's, this is not a hate video. If you come here looking for me to hate on Black Adam, I'm not going to hate on it. I'm just going to be realistic when I'm talking to you guys. I enjoyed it. It was a nice B, C level movie, and it didn't make a lot of money. That's, that's not my opinion. The fact that Black Adam has not made a lot of money and it is technically a flop is not my opinion. That is just factual. That That is just facts when you lay it down. Everything I'm saying is factual. I have the data to bake, to, to bake it, to, to, to back it up, guys, and we're going to bake it. We're going to stick that shit in the oven, put that bitch on 420, and we're going to bake the living shit out of it. Ain't that right, Jimmy? No, all seriousness, guys, Black Adam is financially not doing that well, and that is just factual. That is not something that I'm making up, and which is disappointing because I liked the movie for what it was. It was a nice popcorn flick to enjoy, but Wakanda Forever was a film. That was a movie that had more layers than a Pillsbury buttery biscuit, and believe me, guys, when it comes to biscuits, I know about biscuits. Biscuits. Mmm, biscuits. Yeah. So let's get over to the box office and take a look at what Black Panther actually brought out this past weekend. So as we go to the box office, as you can see, Black Panther Wakanda Forever came in at $180 million on its opening weekend, which I think is just... That's absolutely phenomenal considering, you know, how things are going, you know, post COVID. A lot of people still ain't going to the theater. I never thought this movie was going to be a hundred, uh, 200 million opening. But like I said, it made more in just two days than what Black Adam has made in the past three weeks. Black Adam drops to number two, dropping another 52% and bringing in only 8.6 million. So when we click on Black Panther Wakanda Forever, we can see that right now it's overall gross. I'm talking about domestically, internationally, the worldwide gross is 330 million. And that is just one weekend. And where I say that it Wally walked Black Adam is Black Adam's been out for the past three weeks and Black Adam. Adam right now has only gross total 352 million. So it literally, it literally only has 22 million more than Black Panther and Black Panther just came out this weekend. So Black Adam has been out for the past three weeks and already Black Panther has basically caught up to it. 20 extra million, Black Panther will have that made by the end of the week. And again, guys, that is not my opinion. That is factual. That is the truth. The problem I have here is you got people that are just blinded toward the truth. It's okay to like Black Adam. It's okay to like Wakanda Forever. You don't have to like Wakanda Forever. You don't have to like Black Adam. That is not my job. My job is just to inform you guys of the numbers. And the numbers say Black Panther wally -whopped and destroyed Black Adam. And, and to me, I think that is a problem. I do think that is a problem. And you can add all kinds of different, you know, reasons why you can speculate why like oh it didn't go to china black panther didn't go to china either people oh it's because of this and it's because of that no it's because it costs too much fucking money for that movie to make people don't know who the fuck black adam even is and you can't go by the rock's name power to sell all these fucking tickets because as i said before the rock although he's very well known his movies don't necessarily make money unless it's in the fast and the furious franchise and it is relying on the Fast and the Fur Furious branding. Whereas you have something like Wakanda Forever and you have an established IP. You have a movie that in the first film that people absolutely loved. They wanted to see what was going to happen with Chadwick Boseman's character in this movie. They wanted to see which direction they were going to take. There was way more appeal 
to see Wakanda forever than there is the Black Adam character. And although I really enjoyed Black Adam, I keep saying that, right? Almost like I'm defending myself. I fucking like the guys get off my fucking dick. But I really enjoyed Black Adam. It was a nice B-level movie. It, it, the, the, the plot was fucking asinine. The little kid was fucking annoying. And the CGI was shoddy as times but if you're gonna go watch it just for like beat em up action it's a good movie to catch on tv but it doesn't surprise me that people rather go see wakanda forever in theaters rather than spend their money to go see black adam it does not a big surprise to me at the end of the day, it's not really a competition, but people make them a competition. You might say, Rob, you're making it a competition. No, I'm not making it a competition. I'm just pointing out facts that sometimes a movie studio needs to rely on stuff other than the actor's name and beat them up action. And sometimes you actually need to put thought process into your plot. Wakanda Forever was a movie that was dealing with the death of its main actor, a girl in the name of Shiri that's trying to deal with the loss of her brother, which she failed to save, how to run a kingdom, and how to be the leader that Wakanda needed. That movie had so many different levels to it that it's a very complex movie when you look at it. You can look at it from the surface and go, oh, this is just a regular Marvel movie, but when you break it down, it's so many many different layers so many different levels of that movie in terms of plot and what this movie means to and everything whereas you look at black adam and it's hey it's the rock fighting people and he fights a cgi monster at the end like we haven't seen that same scenario a million times before now we do have james gunn now over in charge of the dc cinematic universe and let's god hope he can do what he did in the mcu and i think james gunn we should trust but for everybody who who is thinking black adam is like the the greatest sense you know whatever and is better than wakanda forever then y'all don't y'all smoking some shit y'all smoking some shit ain't that right jimmy Oh, I lost Jim. There he is. Oh, look at that little motherfucker. He likes those layer biscuits, y'all. He likes those buttery layer biscuits, y'all. So anyway, guys, that's all I have. Um, Wakanda Forever completely wiping out the box office this weekend, bringing in a huge total. Not a big surprise. Fantastic movie. I highly recommend it. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, as always, I am Robert Storms. And remember, guys, buttery biscuits layered. <laughs>